War on Ukraine. This is the very latest. Russian President Vladimir Putin, look at the video, successfully yesterday tested a nuclear-capable missile, warning the test will make Russia's enemies, quote, think twice before threatening Russia. Here to react is Arkansas GOP Senator and Armed Services Committee member Tom Cotton, who joins us now. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning, Ainsley. Good, good to be morning. on with all of you. Morning. Well, good to have you on. This is called the Satan II or the SS-18 Satan, which sounds chilling. Why are they doing this now? Is it because the Western countries are starting to pledge further heavy uh, weaponry aid to Ukraine? Well, Ainsley, Russia is testing new missiles because its current missiles are very old. Um, this was a test that we knew about. They announced it in advance under arms control agreements. Uh, but I do think it reveals a notable mindset difference between Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden. Uh, he goes forward with this test and uses it to threaten the West. We also have routine missile tests that we use for our current missile forces. Yet Joe Biden earlier this month canceled a routine missile test because he didn't want to do anything that would be provocative or escalatory. Right. And I think Vladimir Putin sees that the West is still on the back foot. Second, Russia has about a 10 to 1 advantage in what you might call tactical or battlefield nukes, the kind of nuclear warheads that are small enough to go on even an artillery shell. Uh, we started in the Trump administration trying to restore a sea launch cruise missile that's nuclear capable that uh, the Obama administration defunded. We did that because we wanted Vladimir Putin to think that we had the ability and the will to counter those smaller nuclear weapons precisely so he wouldn't be emboldened to use them. And, and then third, we also need to upgrade our nuclear missiles. They're 50 years old. Democrats like Elizabeth Warren in Congress are trying to stop that. In fact, liberals like Bernie Sanders actually have legislation that would defund our nuclear missiles and give the money instead to Tony Fauci and the CDC. I guess so they can keep making toddlers wear masks on airplanes. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see if we can pivot over to, uh, by the way, they just did a poll. Uh, the, uh, they asked the President Biden's response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They asked the American people, how's he doing? 54% said not, not tough enough. 36% said about right. 8% said too tough. You stand on not tough enough. I get it. But pivoting over to uh, what's happening with China, this directly affects it. Yesterday, in an extraordinary meeting between our Secretary of Defense and theirs, they warned us. Uh, that uh, warned us not to do anything because they considered Taiwan part of the uh, of china and they basically told us it would shatter our relationships if we decided to arm taiwan what should we do well brian uh we should be doing in taiwan exactly what we should have been doing in ukraine over the last year before russia invaded we should arm taiwan even more than we have done for the last 40 years. We should give them the kind of weapons uh, like anti-aircraft missiles or anti-ship missiles or smart mines for the Taiwan Strait that would deter China from ever going for the jugular. Uh, we should consider putting American troops there, not in large numbers, but in numbers that are sufficient to train the Taiwanese military, train them on new weapons that we might provide them, train them on ways to reform their reserve system, which they really need to defend if China goes for the jugular in Taiwan. Finally, we should be very explicit with Ch China, which we've never been, that if they invade Taiwan, we will come to Taiwan's aid. I suspect our allies like Japan and Australia and South Korea would follow us on that. And, and just a word on this meeting, it, it's disappointing to see the Secretary of Defense did not push back aggressively on this threatening uh, rhetoric from the, his counterpart in China. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of last year when the Secretary of State met with his counterpart in Alaska and, uh, and the Chinese foreign minister berated Tony Blinken with BLM talking points and Tony Blinken simply took it and then apologized for America. We need our secretaries when they're meeting with their counterparts around the world, world to be firm and strong in the defense of America's interest and allies. All right, Senator Tom Cotton joining us from the D.C. area. Senator, thank you very much. Thank you.